Hello, friends and neighbors, and welcome to episode 54 of Ray and Benny Talk Sports, the Matt Sheridan edition. Matt Sheridan, eh? Yeah, I pulled that one around, eh? <laughs> yeah, that's a name. Great bomber O-lineman. He was a Blue Bomber Offensive Lineman of the Year in 2004-2005. Of course, a member of the Bombers from 2001 to 2008. Former U of M Bison and Sturgeon Creek Collegiate alumni. That's awesome. He was pretty good. I remember we had time at U of M. We had this event where we can ask them questions. Kind of like, remember that Michael Landsberg? Show? He, actually, Michael Landsberg was there. Uh, what was that show that he used to do on TSN? Off the doing, record. Off the record. <laughs> he was doing that style with Matt Sheridan, and I got to ask a question. I'm like, should they decrease the quota of the Canadians? Uh, yeah. That was like in 2007, 2008. What was his answer? Hell no. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hell no. Uh, friends and neighbors, don't forget to subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. Just take a second, hit that rec, uh, the red rectangle. Don't worry, we'll wait. Yeah, go do us. Find us, uh, Ray Benny Sports, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. And Check us out. Good old TikTok. Uh, let's get into the CFL. You said TikTok already. I'm like, oh yeah. Let's get into CFL power rankings for this week. At number nine, I think it's unquestionable who is in the basement. You've had them there for a while. Okay. Uh, I, I officially put them there myself at number nine, Ottawa. Yeah, I don't think they're ever moving out of number nine. Terrible. They're not going. I, I guess they didn't fire Lapo over the uh, bye week, so they're not going to fire him after that week. But uh, I don't see him surviving beyond this year. Uh, yeah. The way things are going, man. If you can't beat Edmonton at home, you know you've hit rock bottom. You know there's issues that you're not going to be overcome, uh, be able to overcome. So, yeah, what a it's terrible horrible. season! Horrible terrible. second half. They had a lead and then they couldn't score. Yeah, the the hype that Ottawa idea. had going into this season too. It's crazy. Yeah to see them fall flat on their face like this, right? And yeah. Lapo continues to make the same mistakes or more mistakes and different mistakes, and it's just like, good God, man. When are you going to learn? But. Yeah, like he's got to put our buckle in already. Just, you know, let's see what you got with him. But I can't put it all on Pal La Police. Uh, like, although he seems like he's stretched a little thin, he doesn't know what's going on uh, on a play-to-play -play basis. Uh, it's just that roster is underperforming horribly. Horribly, they can't even do basic plays properly. Uh, I feel sorry for Paul Police, although he's four and nineteen as a head coach of the Red Blacks over two seasons. Yuck. Yeah, and twenty Yuck. and twenty and forty-seven overall. So, and but the thing is, like you say about Nick Arbuckle, say Caleb Evans, he's done well, he's played well, but he's still struggling, he's still learning. Take him out earlier, put Arbuckle yeah. in earlier, not wait till what six minutes left in the game when you actually put Arbuckle in the game. Jeez. You know, what's the point? And, uh, that, uh, you know, the, the one good thing is, I guess they got Edmonton next week in Edmonton where Edmonton can't win. Oh, that's somehow. not a good thing. So well, maybe. a good thing after they played like that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, and friends and neighbors, don't forget th that they are still only three games out of first or second <laughs> slash a playoff spot in the Eastern Division. Let's go to number eight. I have Edmonton there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, they, they beat Ottawa in the basement bowl. Again, like they had a great second half. Here they go. They can actually break this home losing streak. That's the big story. Yeah, that's a big thing. And, and it, them winning will actually put them back into the race as well for that Western Conference, uh, Western Conference, Western Division uh, spot. You know, they're chasing, yeah. or the crossover <clears throat> spot, actually. They're chasing Saskatchewan for that spot. Mm -hmm. So, and then they could basically essentially almost. I, you can't say kill Ottawa's chances of making the playoffs because they'll still actually be within shot of still making second or first even. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I'm, I'm expecting that losing streak at home to finally end for the Elks next week. But we'll get into that in our next episode with predictions. For sure. So For sure. Like you said, like, slow start for Edmonton and they got to go in the second half. Carino has got to go on three long drives. You know, played a really good second half. You talk about Edmonton. Uh, and their home losing streak, NB point. In the last 20 games for Ottawa at home, they won one. <laughs> yeah. I could be I guess wrong. That's why they lost this one. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, use that like, use that comment section. If I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. But I, uh, I'm pretty sure they're one and 20. So yuck, just yuck. Uh, I think this is where it's going to become fun in the power rankings. Who do you have at number seven? I got your uh, second favorite team, the uh, Hamilton Tie Cats. <laughs> oh yeah, man! I don't know, man. It, 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 how do they continue 
to be blowing all these games. Another game you had it, you were winning it, blow the second half, get that lead late, and then you still allow Montreal to drive into field goal range. Yeah. I just don't get it, you know. So well, for me, I don't see any progress from that team so far, so I'm going to keep him at number seven. I'll talk about uh, Hamilton. I don't have them far off. I have them number six. But I'll add on to Hamilton. Uh, just at the end of the game there, word around the hammer is that they're playing too much of a cushion on receivers and just allowing teams to march on the field. Remember what Madden said? Playing prevent prevents you, from, you winning. from winning. Yeah, yep. it's the truth. <laughs> they have an aggressive D, and the only reason why it wasn't exposed uh, was probably because, you know, they made the Grey Cup the past couple of years, and they're leading the East almost from beginning to end these past couple of years, other than, you know, Toronto winning last year. But still, uh, yeah, those leads. Those leads. I have actually Toronto at seven. Uh, they're on a two-game losing streak. They're not. They don't look like they're getting any better. Uh, I think they're. I just don't. I, I, people might say I have hate for Toronto, but they just don't have a quarterback. Where's that Chad Kelly package? I was crying about a month ago. I don't know your thoughts, brother. I, well, I have Toronto at six, so we have those in the opposite direction. But Chad Kelly, they got a package for Chad Kelly. Every time they get to the one-yard line or short yardage, he's in there, man. And every other plays on the bench. That's a Chad Kelly package. What a joke! Come on, Dinwiddie. That, that, that whole uh, Toronto were in control of that game against Calgary. The D was playing phenomenal, controlling that Calgary offense. Mm. You just had to keep MBT, BLT, whoever in Three check, last names, man. Don't let them throw. Don't maybe not let them throw as much, but you can see in that second half, he was starting to take risks that he didn't need to. They were up by what, nine or 10. Uh, and Calgary couldn't get anything going on offense. And then BLT throws the interception that gets returned for a touchdown, and that's the game. Yeah. You know, you had it, Dinwiddie. You had it. And, and as much as we want to blame uh, McLeod Bethel Thompson, we've got to give it to Dinwiddie too because – Absolutely. I don't know what he's calling, man. You, you were winning that game. McLeod Bethel Thompson still threw like 43 times. And, and it wasn't – you know, you didn't need to throw until later because you were behind more, but you kept throwing. I get it. Harris was out. Harris is out for the year. So that running game is not the same. Yeah. But you got to figure this out, man. The thing about Chad Kelly is there's a constant criticism that he's not ready for the pros and the game is too fast for him. It's like, give me a break. This guy played big time college football. He'll be fine. And it's not like you're going to put him in with a full playbook. Just put a package with him. Let him do the things he does best. Throw on the run. Go out of shotgun. Use the option play, but no, they're just going to continue with this guy, uh, law firm at quarterback, and it's going to be. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, and when that, when that D can get three interceptions uh, between Bully by Mitchell and Jake Mayer, um, you you should be winning that game. Yeah, you know your offense should be able to do enough to help you win that game, and and they just blew it. That offense, uh, even without Harris, I mean, Harris shouldn't be the issue here. You're winning. Your D is playing well. Finish them off. Harris but, out for the year. That sucks. It that does. Sucks. Torn peck. Yeah. That's surgery. You Winnipeg fans uh, actually are laughing at some of this. Shut up. That's absolutely stupid. The guy put his self on the line for the Bombers. He was a core of building this, and people are happy because he made a professional choice. That's just stupid. Well, and then it goes to justify some of the things that people go, oh, this is why the Bombers didn't want him. Well, okay. We all knew Harris in the last couple of years. Yeah, he was getting it's that true. injury bug. Um, and that probably did factor into a bit of the Bombers reasoning for moving Absolutely on. Absolutely did. It was and huge. So it happens. But at the same time, I don't ever want to see this guy get knocked out for the rest of the oh. year just because, hey, the Bombers didn't keep him because he had a couple injuries the last couple of years. That's no, I still one. want to see him go out there and play and have some success and finish a season, man. It sucks for him because he, he's also at that age where it's like, hey, can I come back from this? Can I keep playing? Will I get signed next year now? So well, it's a lot, man. Well, like, unless Toronto releases, is this a one-year contract only? I think so, wasn't it? Oy. I mean, he got paid good, at least. But. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to get paid either way and getting injured. That sucks. At number five, I have Saskatchewan, the Rough Riders. Uh, they could have easily been ranked seven in my books, but... Oh, God. They're <laughs> terrible. They, they get BC again, and who knows who's going to be their QB. Yeah, that, that, well, the only thing that works out in their favor is that Rourke is not going to be there in BC, so... yeah. You know, this maybe gives a chance for Saskatchewan to get it going. But who is playing quarterback? Like you said, who's going to be playing for Saskatchewan? Are you seeing Fajardo back in there, or are they going to stick with uh, Mason Fine? 
if a Jarder can't make the plays because of his knees, sit him down. Sit yeah. him down. Might as well. And, you know, and, let him rest and bring him back for Labor Day and see what happens and then have the short hook. Yeah, if Fajardo's hurt, the old line's struggling. That's not a good combination. You know, Fajardo needs that time to see what he can see. Otherwise, he it's like he's seeing things quickly and he's taken off right away, which is part of his problem as well. Um, Happy feet because his old line sucks. Yeah. I mean, Mason came in there and he did it fine. Right. I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Very <laughs> he good. Got, Very got, good. A, <laughs> got a quick touchdown on, on his first series or right before halftime. But after that, I mean, he didn't generate any more points. Uh, mm-hmm. He had some good yardage and stuff like that. But, you know, Saskatchewan's offense was still struggling. And now they also lost um, Joe Morrill, right? Uh, broke his hand. So he's out for at least two months. Duke Williams could be out for at least a week or two. Um, so, yeah, they're starting to hurt. Yep, they're not in good shape. And you might no. as well sit him. You have a two-game lead on East and on the Elks. So let the guy sit and see if he's yeah, good for Labor Day. The clown Marino came back and was already so doing questionable things out on the field. What a joke this guy is. What a joke. Way, way to represent. And, and again, some of you Saskatchewan fans, oh, we didn't cheer. Man, some of y'all were cheering when he was leaving after he hurt Mazzoli. Without a doubt. The guy hasn't changed. The guy d- doesn't regret anything. And the whole, I try, I'm try. i going to try and reach out to Mazzoli and talk to ah, him. Crap. It's up. just like, dude, just be quiet. Get out of here, clown. Yeah. Uh, so you got Saskatchewan at five? Yes, sir. Word. I got Montreal at four. Two wins in a row. They're surging. Uh, still put up 176 yards and penalties. <laughs> That's a lot. 176. But they got out of the hammer with a win. Good for Schiltz. Yeah, I got I got them at uh, number four as well. Um, that's the thing, though. They're just getting by. They beat the Bombers, and I don't know, it's, you know, mistakes by the Bombers that helped the win, mistakes by Hamilton helped the win, but they're, they're staying in these games, and they're playing well. The offense is um, taking almost what the defense was giving them. Even against Hamilton, they were, they were taking the short underneath stuff. Harris was quick getting that ball away, getting rid of that, you know, away from that fierce uh, pass rush by Hamilton. So mm. they, played, they played a great game plan. Um, against Hamilton, and you know they managed to hit a late field goal to win the game. And yeah, Hamilton helped them out. Hamilton made too many mistakes late in the game, but you know Montreal stuck in there and uh, took the game. And now they're tied for first. That's pretty good. <laughs> or they're in second because of winning I guess percentage. Second. Yeah, because of winning for now. percentage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and this thing about uh, the old adage: you can't lose your job due to injury. Uh, it's a bunch of trash. I don't believe that at all uh, when it comes to any position. Yeah, I mean, if a guy comes in and plays well, it makes it tough, right? It's, it's hard to go back to a guy who maybe even before injury, if he was struggling, it's like, it's like, well, I'm going to I'm gonna take the guy who's playing well right now. Go with the hot hand, you know, so. Good luck, Dane Evans. Good luck. Yeah, he and he dressed too, right? Dane Evans dressed in that game too, but didn't play. So I don't even know why you're dressing him if you weren't planning on playing him. <laughs> Just in case. Just in case. Who do you got at number three? I got Calgary still at number three. Uh, yeah. You know, six and three. Won a game they probably should have lost. Um, Absolutely. Bowl of Uvi looked terrible. Uh, <laughs> two two interceptions in the first half. Uh, like He only had like 62 yards in the first half and got replaced in the third quarter by Jake Mayer and he actually drove down the field. He Threw an interception in Anzo, but he actually moved the ball up and down and and like actually total yards. He yeah. stunk. Take away that eighty yarder that he passed at the beginning yeah. of the game. He went eight for fifteen for sixty nine. Yeah, that's is he done? Are you willing to say that the legend? He's a legend and he's a Hall of Famer. Two cups, two cups in ten years. Yeah, he's going. He's going to Hall of Fame. Is he done? Yeah, I I, I thought he was done before this season. And then he came in and played actually a couple decent game, decent games. And I'm thinking, okay, maybe I made a mistake here. I, maybe he's, he is fine, and he's coming off injuries the last couple of years, so now he's in his groove again. But after watching him for the last few weeks, man, and even against the Bombers and stuff, he, he just doesn't look like his old self. And yeah, I think he's done. And I think Calgary at some point are going to have to make a decision here, and probably in this year. And if they want to have a shot at this great cup, probably switch to Jake uh, and go from there. Yeah, I think the headline is going to be Jake Meyer takes over at Labor Day and wins the great cup. Wouldn't that be crazy? Wow, I hope that last part doesn't come true. (laughs) (laughs) Just putting out headlines. Just putting out headlines there. We'll see this week. Who's going to play this week against the Bombers? And even if they go with Bo, you're probably, 
he's probably going to get a quarter. And if he's not doing anything in that quarter, they're probably going to, there's going to be a quick yank because they, yeah. they can't lose this game. They lose this game to Bombers. Uh, their chances of getting to that first place are probably gone. Yeah. You know, so they're, they're not a host in that. They still have a chance for second, especially with that Rourke injury. But absolutely. But if you can't beat any of the top dogs in this league, at some point, people are going to question your, your record as well. Yeah. Yeah. Let's move on to number two. I got BC. Same. <sighs> Man, terrible injury man that sucks is horrible not just yeah. for bc but for the league yeah uh that guy was special it uh, he was and you know and it was fun to watch him it was fun to watch that offense and yeah we'll see if michael o'connor who's going to step in now can to, can replicate it at all or even close to it half of it something bc still got the receivers at least right well let's see what these naysayers say see if they're right yeah. If the production drops humongously, there's going to be a production drop. Like, come on. There's going to be a production drop off the start especially. But let's see in a couple of games. If it's just about the receivers and O'Connor, who is a really good quarterback still, very athletic, good pedigree. Guy went to Penn State. Like, he got offered to Penn State, and he left. So he has talent, so we'll see. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because it's interesting. Is it the offense that's been, you know, a wicked – tailored offense to Rourke or whatever and with these receivers and if another quarterback can come in and, and keep it humming the same way Rourke was then yeah it's like you know maybe the OC is the, the big reason for it or the receivers I mean they, they got a plethora of receivers there and they're all very good right Lucky yeah. Whitehead got a 90 yard TD uh, last game or, or whatever it was so oh my goodness. you know and then and the D for BC is playing well on top of that right another three interceptions seven total turnovers in that game against Saskatchewan and then five sacks on top of it. Like, that's Saskatchewan crazy, stinks. man. <laughs> yes. He yeah. stinks. So, yeah, it'll, it'll be fun. And, and it sucks because, yeah, Rourke was having another decent game, you know, throwing a bunch of yards. He had a couple of interceptions, but he was he was dealing, and that offense was still humming. Yeah. That's the thing. He can throw those interceptions, and he'll come back and throw a touchdown on the next one. Or Oh, he's he, confident. Like, you're never out of it with, with, with Rourke or that whole no, offense. So. Especially with his feet. He has yeah. that option, and that really – you can't commit as a linebacker to doing crazy stuff when you have a guy like that who could just take off and get 10, 12 yards or touchdowns, like, you know. So, so we'll see. We'll see if the Rourke factor is as huge as some of us believe it is. I, I bought in. I bought into him. I did as well, and I, I hope BC can continue on. Like, we, you need BC to start – the fans that need to start coming out in BC. Absolutely. So we need them, to, you know, at least to keep winning and get this thing rolling and whatever happens for the rest of the season happens, but at least into next year if we can build on that, right? Um, so we'll see, and hopefully they do that, and hopefully the excitement's there. There's always a talk, or there is a talk, that Rourke has the potential of possibly getting back late in the season, um, but that might be more wishful thinking than anything. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Bombers at number one. Yep, yep, yep. After the bye, tough loss against Montreal. Uh, big game, as we mentioned earlier with the Stampeders coming up. Ellingson leaving the field early in practice, pulling up lame, I think, during running a route. Not a good sign. Yeah, I think he missed practice. Uh, what's the name? Sunday, missed Sunday's practice with a hip injury. So I don't know if that factored into it today. I thought I saw on the their injury report it said foot, but, um, Maybe I was mistaken with someone else. I don't know. Did Jeff go practice today as well? Or well, he might have had his day off. Uh, no, he had that yesterday. He usually Maybe he did practice day today. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's a big loss because Ellingson had played so well. Uh, and this was part of, I guess, the issue with him not being able to find a team is his body has taken some hits over the last couple of seasons. So yeah. hopefully he can round back into form and, you know, for the late. receiver. Yeah, late season run, we'll have him in there because we definitely need him. We need that big body receiver in there, uh, especially that Kolaros trusts him, especially around the goal line with that big body to shield it and get those TDs that he got earlier. So, Yeah, the Bombers are in good shape in regards to their schedule. A couple more bye weeks, six home games. Uh, and like you said earlier, if they win this one, they can really bury Calgary, get them out the way. And yeah, really and then at that point... On BC. Exactly. At that point, you're only worrying about one more team that's possibly going to pass you because obviously the Labor Day and the home and home with Saskatchewan, no matter how terrible Saskatchewan is, those games are always tough. Yep. It's going to be um, huge. So they're not a given, even if the Bombers are, you know, one loss going into those games or anything like that. So no, focus especially on... after the Bombers have beaten their ass the past couple of playoffs, they're angry. They oh, always yeah. want to play the Bombers hard. 
Yeah. And that Labor Day, that crowd always pumps them up pretty good. So, but get by Calgary, try to get to 10 and one. Um, if you could beat Calgary for a third time this season, that's really going to demoralize Calgary altogether. So yeah, it'd be great. So watch for Jake Meyer. <laughs> yeah. Watch for Jake Meyer quick, who does have a win over the Bombers late last season. Not everyone was full of effect, but still, he came back and he won it. For uh, sure. Speaking uh, of hmm. that game, hmm. don't forget to enter our contest for uh, to win some free tickets to that game uh, on Thursday night. One more day, Ray Benny yeah. Sports online. Get in there. Two tickets. Check it out. Let's get some quick shots in. Cadre to Calgary. I like great, it. Great move. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? It's funny because when I when I saw what was happening in Calgary this year, I thought, okay, they're on the path for trying to get Connor Bedard. You know, like got rid of Kachuk, who Joe left, and it's like, you know, or before yeah, Kachuk left, when he requested his trade, you're like, okay, well, what are you going to get? You know, might as well go into a rebuild and and see if you can get in that lotto for next year. But no, then they made a decent trade. They got Huberto Wager from Florida, and yep. now they got Kadri to fill in another, uh, you know, top center spot. You can go one two with you had Backlund as well there, so they have a decent center depth. Lindholm, um, so they, they're looking okay, and they, they may have another strong team going into next season. Yeah, really can't add much to that. Love how Kadri played during the playoffs, even flesh off of injury. Uh, great emotional player. He yeah. can play so many ways on the ice. His style can adapt to whoever you're playing. And, you know, he's coming in, coming close to the twilight of his career, but he has a good another two, three years left. And this is where he steps up and be, he becomes a leader, I think. So good for Calgary. Good yeah, for Calgary. This, it could be another one where the contract at the end of the term is not good anymore, right? But you're hoping in the next a few years. And Kadri, he put up some crazy amount of points last year. At some point, he was, he was leading Colorado in points, I believe, uh, for part of that season, uh, the season last year, so he's definitely could put up those points. That if he's got Huberto on his wing or anything like that, you know, he could have another very good season in Calgary. For sure, for sure. Deshaun Watson, eleven games, five million. Uh, at least the NFL did something better than what the arbitrator did. Uh, it is what it is. It is, and I, I mean, should have went for the full season. The funny thing is that eleventh game, the twelfth game, is against Houston. So it's like they open that up, you know, so he can come back at the same time as playing playing his old team. It's like uh, another shady issue by the NFL to kind of bump up the excitement or whatever. I don't know how anyone gets excited for that game to watch Deshaun Watson come in and play his first game. Man, I'd rather see the guy get booed out of a stadium at this point. Did uh, Baker Mayfield get named as a starter for Carolina today? Yeah. I'm going to cheer for Carolina NFC. Carolina Cleveland week one. I'm I'm cheering for Carol. Oh yeah, I'm cheering for <laughs> Carolina all the way this year to make the Super Bowl. Uh, go Baker Mayfield. Go. I got one shout out to give this week. Shout out to Gary Stern and the Alouettes organizations and the fans of of the Alouettes for breaking the twenty thousand attendance mark. Great growth. I really like this guy on Twitter. He's really injecting some energy into that market. I know it's just only Twitter, but uh, he's visible. And he's fun. Yeah, it's good for the league. It's engaging, and I like seeing it too. Even, you know, his guarantees to beat the Bombers. Yeah, Montreal ends up beating the Bomber in the second game. Um, it's funny just seeing that back and forth, man. And it's good interaction, especially when you want to build that fan base back up. Like Montreal's yeah. fan base is great when they're winning. Slowed down the last few years now. But, you know, get it back up there, and you got to build it, right? Yeah. And he has so, this charm yeah. of being the old man on Twitter. It's like... Yeah, you know, he's trash talking with people, but people don't aren't rude trash talking. Maybe no. some losers that are nobody's. Wow, there's always somebody. <laughs> but, you know, like he trash talks Milt Stiegel and they have fun back and forth. So good for them. Uh, and they do great things like having players and management available for season ticket holders before games on game day. And they had like a $5 or $10 youth ticket game recently. That's a good idea. Yeah, and so that's the thing you got to do. And that's the thing, the hardest thing for the CFL is they have to is get young people back involved in this game and coming out to the game yes. and getting the parents to get them the games. Or even, you know, now you got to try to try to snag those teenagers. There's 18 year olds who have never been to a game or anything like that. Get them in there somehow yeah. and get them hooked. Be but, more visible online. Yeah. Start dominating that, dominate on YouTube. Uh, or TikTok, you know? Good old. TikTok. Benny, you got anything to say to our friends out there? 
You know what? Uh, thanks a lot for listening. Um, don't forget to subscribe, follow us, uh, check us out, and have a good couple of days. And in the famous words of Ed Whalen from Stampede Wrestling, in the meantime and in between time, that's it. Another edition of Ray and Benny Talk Sports. Hey, friends and neighbors, don't forget to check us out online on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at Ray Benny Sports. And don't forget to check out our YouTube channel. Leave a like, leave a comment, tell us what you think.